There Feeling a little psychedelic right now, you know? There we go. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. A, little, a little micro. You take the, the little, shrooms before we little, get started here? Little. You may have. <laughs> wow. May or may not have. May or may not may have. May or may not okay. have. Okay. I don't know how it would make you feel, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Can't say I know either. Um, oh, have you never done shrooms before? No. Ever? No. Okay. I'm a big... Uh, I'm a big don't fix what's not broken. My noggin's good. I'm good. Like, I'll try shit. Like, I'm not opposed to trying it. But, yeah. like, I'll never do it on any sort of, like, I don't do anything on a consistent basis outside of... Uh, I mean, you shouldn't, really, unless yeah. you want to be relying on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like edibles. I do like edibles. Oh, okay. my boy is an edible ambassador at this oh, point. Oh, yeah. actually, no. I, I remember <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was in the slurf situation where uh, you just baked uh, off your ass. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was. <laughs> there's been a few spaces. There's there's quite nothing like being in a spaces and Mark enters. He's like, yeah, man, I just I'm all, I'm off an edible right now and I'm just vibing. Is that how I sound? And, uh, Is that how I sound? Yeah, we in this spaces. What's going loose. on, everybody? Like, it is. Yeah. Uh, it's been a minute since we've had a good high space. I might have to. I might have to fire one up at some point. We um, should just make that a series. Yeah. But the tough oh, part is, uh, it's like by the time I'm that high, I want to go to bed. Like uh, I'm not like, so the shitty part is the slurf space. I mean, my God, I was on that space for six hours. Like just, I, I remember was, it. I, I, I listened, <laughs> we all that, remember that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the edible was done by the time I went to bed. Like it was like, I think you were done by yeah, the time. that too. That Facts. too. Yeah. Um, and then everybody the next day was just like, you made so much money last night. And I was like, I did not. I was way too high to even profit a dollar. I legitimately did not profit a dollar. And I was like, I quite literally couldn't yeah. have traded my, uh, yeah, didn't know how to trade that night. It's too high. I was doing it wrong. Too high. But I hear that. Klaus, how we doing, man? Welcome Good, to the man. pod. I appreciate you guys having me. I mean, I was excited to be back in California. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't. I didn't know who you were when we met you yesterday. And then, you, and Sonny was like, "Oh, he's coming on the podcast." I was like, "Oh my god, I've never met Klaus in person." All no, no, we, we hadn't met in person, but I think, yeah, you're one of like probably the earliest D gods I follow. Because I mean, I, I I know the like the loyal ones. I mean, it, you know that within any community, if you pay attention. Yeah, it's Sonny yeah. Bear and I. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, oh no. The, the most, uh, the most loyal, the most loyal. Um, he is loyal. He's, he is he loyal. Is loyal. You can't knock him on that one. Yeah, you know, he, he's loyal to his takes. You gotta, you gotta at least give him that. You gotta at least. He's, lo- him- he's loyal to the hate. He's you know loyal to the hate. He is loyal to the hate. You know. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, you're tall. You're very tall. I, I'm, you know, I'm decently tall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, everybody's taller than you. Well, Mark. but I mean, but how, <laughs> that's also another fair point. But like, how tall are you? You got Mark Wahlberg and then an NBA player next. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, how tall are you? Uh, six five. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's that's yeah, up yeah. there. You're just gonna roll around with both of us, both of us and he's you know? he's got he seems taller than you. Don't lie. <laughs> See, <laughs> to be fair though, I've never felt short at pretty much any crypto event. Yesterday, I met Dre Millie for the first time. I don't think time. you've ever been short ever. Oh, like you no, probably I mean, came I, up I, I don't feel at short at three. At, like <laughs> you know, uh, but I met Dre Millie for the first time yesterday. I've known him for or just via Twitter for years as well. But I was like, Jesus, you you're tall. Yeah. Like, and, and oh, I, yeah. I, I I don't say that to another <laughs> tall person. Like I like I was like I feel how short people feel right now. I felt good. Yeah, see, I, the unfortunate part is I'm tall, or not, I'm, t- I'm not tall. I'm friends with all the tall people in the space. And so then I get, like, photos with, it. like, I'll only take photos with Sonny when I'm sitting down. For sure. No one, never, no one ever points that out, but I'm not, I don't need to be in a photo next to Sonny standing up. Why would I do that to myself? Like, well, or, I, or if we're standing up, we're, like, on a hill, and he's at the top of the hill, and yeah. I'm, like, you know, at the bottom. I'm not about to do myself dirty like that. I mean, yeah, like, I've, you know, I took a photo with Sonny, and then Doug from D Golf, and like I was like, I look like I'm two foot tall in this photo. Like, what am I doing here? I mean, I understand the strategy though, because you know they say the five people you have most in your life are the ones that you hang out with, or you know you become certain elements of them. So clearly, Mark's trying to become tall. Yeah, we'll, I'm we'll a girl. see whether or not it works though. I've been saying, man, y'all don't want tall Mark. Y'all wouldn't know what to do with tall Mark. Okay? The energy would be insane. Um, but. Yeah, tall Mark would be 
absolutely the most obnoxious person on this planet. Yeah, I actually, I, I often say, I think I'd be a dickhead if I was tall. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So you think your you ego might be is bare kept in check by, by that then? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you just, you know, as a as a short person, you're. <laughs> You're always, I mean, I get carded nonstop. I'm 31, almost 32, <laughs> still get carded all the time. Like, I, I went I, through, I would love that. I haven't been carded for a very long time. Yeah, but, like, I mean, like, I went to the casino once with one of my buddies who's 6'7", and, yeah. like, it was a casino where you had to be, I think it was, yeah, it was, like, 20, yeah, normal casino, 21. And we walk up, and they're, like, ID to me. And I was, like, you're not going to ask him for his ID just because he's... Six seven, like you, you don't need a tall person's ID. You can't be young and tall. Like no, no. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, so ask for yeah, my it, ID. It doesn't work. Didn't yeah. ask for his. You know, yeah. so it just it, you know heightism. You you don't have any facial hair either. Well, that's so it's it, not, that's another it's problem. Not, yeah. It's not just heightism. It's like yeah. you literally baby face as fuck it, out. You, here. you do have a baby face, but do you but do you shave it that often, or is just more so? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Bro's never just, touched a razor in his I mean, life. I mean, should I? Fair. No, no. Should I give the? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I can give the truth of it. The truth of it is, I it's bald up top, bush down below type of vibe. No, that's crazy. It's a crazy way to start this podcast. Um, no, oh, um, fuck. the the truth of it is, the truth of it is, I had real bad acne growing up, and so I had uh, I was on Accutane three times, and so I used to get a shit ton of ingrown hairs on my face, and it bothered the hell out of me because I'd have to go to the dermatologist and get them get them taken out. And so when I was like probably 22, I was like, I looked at my dad. I was like, he doesn't have a good beard. And I was like, I'm probably never going to be able to grow a good beard. And so I was like, fuck it. Laser hair removal, the entire outside of my mustache. So I could, I could grow a mustache and I still have to shave, but like, I'll never be able to grow a beard. And I'm like, and oh, so you, you did go through. That oh yeah. Process. I went there. Cause I was like, it was, what it was is it like three, four lasers? Your face? Eight, eight sessions. You got eight sessions. Yeah. Yeah, you my step brother. I didn't have did a choice. That. It was like, I was going to a dermatologist every once a week. Like getting right. getting ingrown hairs removed, and I was like, "Dude, this is this is driving me clinically insane, and also is so unbelievably expensive." And I was just like, "I mean, again, I was like, my dad can't grow a good beard, so like his is patchy as hell. So like, why would I?" Damn, your dad's just catching strays. Well, right he now. <laughs> he shaves it regardless. So I was like, "There's just no, I don't know. Like I, you know, it is what it is. At the end of the day, I got great hair up top, so I got no issue yeah. with it because you know, I like it is what it is. You can't have gray or great." Great, great. I do have a few grays. I'm 32, almost 32. So, you know, got a few grays. But, right. anywho, that's what, yeah, so I can't grow a beard. So, that's the, uh, nothing wrong with I that. I could grow though. a stash. I could, I could do that, but yeah. I don't, nah, I think Mark I'm just, with a stash. Stash would be crazy. Yeah. I like, kind of funny, though. I like the meme coin. I don't know how I feel about the actual <laughs> having a stash, you know. My you dad had one. You my dad had a stash back in the day. Yeah, one yeah. time for the one time, you should bring it out. No, um, what is it? Movember? Is that what they call it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. November? Yeah, mustache. It's like most mustache November sort of thing. Oh. Yes. No shave November, another thing. Yeah. I've just heard no shave and no nut November. Oof. You, you participating this year? No, my birthday's <laughs> in November. <laughs> Just got a nut on your birthday. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> That's a crazy. Klaus and I are like, do we do we, do we acknowledge? What further, you're yeah. Do we ask further questions or? All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Anywho. Um. Welcome to the podcast. Um. This is this is the weirdest start to a podcast we've ever I'm had. Enjoying it. It's, yeah. it's uh, definitely loose. Hey, honestly, fun. I feel like it kind of goes on par with just where are you coming from, Psychedelics Anonymous. Like we just. Trying to have fun again, we're you know. Just trying to have fun. We're just vibing. Yeah, Klaus, give like a thirty Yo, second suck. elevator pitch. Who is Klaus? What's the story? Give us, give us the whole background. Who's Klaus? Oh, thirty seconds. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Cool. All right. I'm born and raised in California. I uh, moved out to Colorado five years ago. Worked in Web three last three years. You know, community made kind of content leader as well as worked for a few different brands or advised. And then uh, it got to a point where I, I wanted to make an impact, but. I've seen a whole lot of people come through here and I, you know, I feel like I've learned some things, you know, and that's not a shot at anyone. It's just more so, uh, you know, I'm hoping I can make my own impression on the space. Yeah. But, you know, the, the pitch is destigmatized psychedelic culture. I'm, I'm building a, you know, digital psychedelic cult. There we go. Word. Yeah. I got a random question. Yeah, hit me. Are, is, is there any form of shrooms that are supposed to put you in your feelings? Mm, what do you mean by put you in your feelings? <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like... Are you so, in your feelings right now? Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> not right now. But I, I, I got to learn like, more. And what, there's some yeah, layers yeah, to that. Yeah, no, not right now. But I feel like I have I have done like the microdose like gummies yep. or whatever. I'm, I'm going to keep it honest. I like... 
I never really like mess with shrooms or anything like that prior to, I don't know, maybe like, I, it's probably been less than a year to be honest. Totally fair. Um, and I've really only ever done like the microdose, like the gummies and like the little chocolates or whatever. But anyways, like one time or a few times I've been all like off these gummies. That's just like for whatever reason, I feel like I get in my feelings on just like I'm just like telling people that I love them. And you, you, you've ever have oh, you I've ever gotten seen a few that? of those texts. I mean, you should, you should, you should. <laughs> have you ever have you ever seen like the. Have you ever seen like the the meme, like the Ed, Ed and Eddie meme, where he like brings them in, yeah. and it's just like you're, when you're just like drunk and telling your fr- homies that you love them, and like you're just saying like all this like compassionate stuff, and like I don't know, I feel like I just start talking and then I just start rambling and just keep going, and I'm just like, damn, I was like really in my feelings, like I don't know, is that, sure. is that is that is that is that something that happens with well, with so. Terms? I mean, I would say psychedelics in general. Okay. They make you more self-aware of, I don't know, either your own self-programming or stuff you've been maybe kind of holding on to that maybe you're repressing or even just stuff that you haven't fully processed. Like, uh, I, w- I was talking, we actually, I'm not going to share who it was, but a, 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 a friend in the space, and you guys definitely know him, uh, where he was asking me, like, you know, would you recommend any strategy before, you know, I microdose because I, I want to reflect on uh, an X. And, and, and for me, it was oh, damn. Uh, or it was more so like being single now, yeah, and like yeah, moving sure, on and sure. just like, you know, moving through that. And I, I had something I went through. Um, and I mean, to your point, mushrooms aren't for everyone. And nor do I think they should be advertised towards everyone. Like, it's more so the mission of, like I said, destigmatized psychedelic culture has layers to it. Like that's legislation, that's arts, that's, you know, medicine. I mean, it's, Fair. there's so many different things we can do with it. Uh, but ultimately, like, I don't want to force it down people's throats and nor will I be the one fucking like ever selling that shit. I mean, I'm not trying to put people at risk. Um, at the same time, like it's helped me like profoundly through shit I've repressed in my life. Uh, like m- my own kind of, upbringing or you know ways i wish i would have been a better you know kind of son or individual or friend like over the years and i I do think i'm a good person but just ultimately like we are never fully aware of some of the impacts we have on people and uh, i think microdosing or even you know psychedelics in a sense can awaken you to yourself like you know your own limitations your own experiences you know like i said shit that you maybe you've repressed for 10 15 years uh, and a whole lot of people just kind of put that in the back of their mind and move on and they think they're fine. But then when you say in your feelings, that's usually because they have some things that they like kind of wish they said earlier or like made an impact on where it's like, oh, now it's just going to come out naturally or a little bit more, you know, fluidly where you're like, oh, wow, that guy's on one. Uh, yeah. but, but for some people, yeah, I mean, they probably overdo it with dosage. And I think that's another thing, too, where around the world we're seeing a bunch of these over counter shops like in New York and L.A., um, start to like kind of have psilocybin mushroom chocolate bars. A lot of them, if they're not like certified and pure, have a ton of synthetics in them. Mm. Uh, so that's another thing too, is be careful. You know, if you ever do dabble in that stuff and I'm not saying you absolutely should, but if you do like be, be careful, careful of, it's coming of from the them. purity, because yeah. it can really fuck with your brain chemistry. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. I'm like the suppressing king, so that that kind of makes a lot of sense. Well, uh, I'm what, not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, well, what your story <laughs> told me that'd be true. Is, <laughs> what your story told me is that you don't tell people I love you enough. So I I, I think you should tell people you know you love them more. Sonny, yeah, maybe. <laughs> fuck you, Mark. <laughs> what would you like to say? Oh, just fuck you. No, what else? That's all. No, come on, <laughs> say it. <laughs> say it. Got nothing to say. Oh, you're a, you're a wonderful person, Mark. Anything else? No, it's just. How do you feel about me? (laughs) We got to wait for the edible to hit a little bit more. At the end of this, he's like, bitch, I love you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. That's good. That's good stuff. That makes sense. Yeah, Yeah. no. I feel like that's probably what I've I've felt a few times (laughs) when (laughs) when I've been on these gummies. I'm not going to lie. Oh, that's facts. I've gotten. I'm I've, learning about myself today. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, I get those texts from him every once in a while. I can tell when he's in his feels. You know, that's a. It's a. <laughs> is he writing like a, a really profound one sentence, or is he like more of an essay in your feels type of guy? He'll just like, <laughs> like every once. You know those like breakups where you see like the response memes where yeah. it's like a whole page and a half. And you're like, oh boy. I mean, sometimes I get a FaceTime. Sometimes I get like a hey, okay. hey, <laughs> love you. <laughs> I'm like, all right, yeah, love you too. 
I'm like, is there anything compelling this? Uh, like yeah. nine thirty on a on a Thursday? Like uh, just uh, just no. Mark is downplaying the fuck out of this because every time he receives it, he's like, oh my god. I wasn't expecting this. Oh, that's, <laughs> how I, that's how I respond. That's crazy. That he's like, nuts. he's like. Yesterday, I was giving him compliments on the golf course, and he was just like, "All right, now say something mean. This just doesn't feel right." Well, I yeah. Was he, like, all right, chill if, out. If Sonny says too many nice things in a row, I get very confused. What's happening? <laughs> So, Fair. you know, I, I have friends yeah. like that where, like, if they're overly nice, I'm like, what the fuck's up with you today? Yeah. Like, you're never this nice to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Crazy. So, all right. So, Klaus, take us back. Like, how did you get into, how did you get into crypto? How'd you get yeah. into Web3? All that good stuff. So, I mean, to be honest with you, I feel like a whole lot of motherfuckers I saw. So, I don't know if the mic needs to be up higher. I think oh, here. Let me, uh, I'll raise it for you. I'll just lower it first. Let it go lower. <laughs> Let it go lower. So, like, a lot of people, um, you know, initially saw the Bored Apes all over Twitter or, or even just, like, social media where I was like, what is going on kind of in crypto? Um, definitely familiar with kind of crypto punks as well. And I started watching a ton of videos. Funny enough, it was Gary Vee that really reeled me in. And I hate saying this, but it was actually, like, the application of smart contracts where I was like, oh, this seems like it, it could apply to any industry, like, you know, aside from just the digital kind of gold kind of aspect of crypto, you, you have actual like practical applications. Like, I mean, when people talk about voting in the world and how that's like a really, really hot topic, it's like that could be solved with blockchain in terms of like transparency. There's a whole lot of world problems to be solved there, but that reeled me in. And then like most people, you know, utility was a buzzword, but it, I think what kept me here was probably art and community that there's been whole lot of lessons along the way and i mean i've been part of a whole lot of different communities over the years i also i'm like obviously a lot more passionately involved in, in speaking about pa well, duh now but in hindsight kind of wish you know i got into even more communities because there's so many lessons or like experiences that you know i didn't necessarily have but from that kind of get-go I, I immediately met all of my best friends that are in crypto from pa I also, it was the first kind of community that wasn't just a like quick rug to me where, you know, I look across the space now, so many leaders from within PA have either significant roles or like status within different communities or even blockchains where it makes me really fucking happy to be honest with you. Um, so it was just kind of my initial family where, you know, some of the experiences too with NFTs, I think the first five or six I bought were almost all rugs where I was just flipping them. Some of them I made profit on, but once I found PA, I was like, oh, something with a mission that I can kind of stand behind. I also have my own personal experiences with mental health and like psychedelics as well as I have family and friends that do. So it just, it aligned for me like initially. Um, and I, I think to, to that degree as well, I wish I went more into kind of the just pure art versus PFPs at times too, because there's so much stuff I'm still learning about just kind of like historically uh, of, you know, what's happened or, you know, even from a sense of what could happen. Um, you know, when you talk about like squiggles or even Jack Butcher now, it's like art has really progressed over the years and people, you know, might not always be attached to a PFP. They will always be attached to art and art speaks differently to everyone. But I mean, I, I guess that's the initial kind of nutshell of how I got into it. That's fair. That's fair. You mentioned you mentioned mental health there and psychedelics yeah. and things like that. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because yeah, I feel like, sure. I mean, listen, if you're in the crypto space, Mental health is is uh, it's a roller coaster in this space, which I and I and I'd say that half jokingly, but half yeah. also very serious. Like this space is like very very emotionally draining at times, and very uplifting at times, and it's a, it's a real roller coaster. And so I feel like there's a lot of people, a lot of people in life in general who deal with di various uh, different elements of mental health and things like that. And so what was your experience with psychedelics? And was that you said is that what kind of drew you to psychedelics? Was something with mental health that you wanted to work upon or what was, tell us a little no, bit no, more about for that. For sure. Well, so my first, I would say introduction to psychedelics and I'll be honest, was like at a music festival. Um, <laughs> definitely though, kind of floored me in a sense where, you know, I was in my feelings like Sonny was. And <laughs> I, I was like, oh damn, realizing all this shit about myself, like, you know, and, and just like really enlightened at the same time, took in nature to a whole different degree. Uh, but from a mental health side that like that took up over years for me to fully figure out where I had some, you know, things I was suppressing from just like family trauma over the years where, you know, until I started like microdosing or even taking psychedelics, I had never really processed all this shit. It was all repressed. 
Um, and, and for my own end, it was like, oh, my actual mental sanity, my mental health, my clarity, like my peace of mind was actually becoming more and more like, I would say developed in a sense where I was aware of people's energy, their auras, like how they felt or received people. And for me also just, I would say over the years have lost quite a few friends from like pharmaceutical deaths or other elements of like suicide, for example. And I don't know, plant medicine in my mind, when you look at the world, it, it definitely needs a whole lot more of it. I mean, you can look at back hundreds of years and, that's why they're using plant medicine. We're now everything that have a pill for everything now. And I think that's partly why the world is so fucked up is, you know, governments or even, you know, pharmaceutical industry have kind of enabled that in a sense. Uh, so I, I just don't want to see that happen to more friends or family, but also, you know, kind of the backing of plant medicine in general can be a lot healthier for people. And it's almost, you know, to that degree, I, I mean, look at SSRIs versus psychedelics. If you, if you looked at the like recent Google Trends chart or any chart over the last few years, obviously SSRIs are going down. You know what's going up? Psychedelics because it's plant medicine. I mean, obviously there's different breakups or I guess groups of psychedelics, but from a psilocybin side, like people are like, oh, this is from nature. Um, and I, I don't know if they can really fight that in a sense where – I don't know. I'm tired of seeing people abuse shit too. And I know people on plenty of, you know, pills and that's their own prerogative. Sometimes they need them for actual health reasons, but I, I just personally don't want to see that happen again. I've also, you know, my own, in my own ways, kind of, like I said, battled depression, anxiety through years of family trauma, stuff I repressed, other experiences there. So I don't know. There's, there's a whole holistic approach to it where it's about me it's about people I care about it's also about the greater world where I'm just tired of seeing and, and I've talked with many people about this but when you look at free speech you know they're fighting against media and, and kind of like narratives that have been ingrained like the last 10 15 20 years where everyone's so divisive now you look at you know pharmaceutical and plant medicine or even natural medicine same kind of thing where there's this you know divisive battle um, you look at crypto versus banking and traditional finance at each other's like throats and if you look at politics you're either red or blue there's so many people i know in between that are just like i'm so over all this oh, nonsense <laughs> i don't even want to go into politics but it's just more so a, a point of like there's so much more to the world like it's not all black and white sometimes it's gray and you need to understand why it's gray type of vibe 100 you know? percent, absolutely i mean i i love the i love the aspect that you're talking about as far as like these um like plant-based medicines uh obviously um, I think there's a, it, it, it's kind of one of those things where it's, it's interesting to see how so many people are kind of like weaning off to your point, like either if it's pills or like, even like, um, even you take food and dietary things like processed foods and sure. like, um, all, all, all these various ways to kind of live, at least get closer to a more holistic, uh, life. And I think, even to your point, as far as like anxiety and depression and, and some of these things that people deal with, like a, a lot of times people don't even realize that some of that is literally just coming from either the food that you eat. You're not exercising in another enough, aspect, you're not going sure. outside, you're not like, you know, getting enough sunlight, like whatever. Right. Um, and all of that just pushing you into this kind of more like holistic uh, lifestyle where it's just kind of like get away a little bit from all the stuff that's like you've been that we've been sold for the past like x amount of years to even get us to this point of of needing to almost like it feels like it almost feels funny that it's like the rebellion is like to be healthy from a more natural way than like the non-natural it's, way it's crazy but i mean to your point think about I don't know how attached we are to phone screens now. And that's something I work on every single day where I'm like, you know, maybe I need to just go on a walk and detach for 30 minutes to an hour because I'm on to like a phone or a laptop almost every hour of waking minute of a day. It's also yeah. my job to be in a sense, but like, that's not good for us. We don't also fully understand the full effects of that where we see it with societies and kind of the children that grew up with smartphones where families are like, they don't have control over their children or their children are just like, you know, completely focused on tech and they have no social lives but to your point wellness has multiple spokes like within it and spirituality or even you know kind of wellness within a sense it could be so many different things it could be emotional it could be physical like, like you were saying and 
you need to channel and kind of focus on all those if you want to be like a holistic wealth person or you know have a really good life but not everyone realizes each of those spoke needs work like it's like from a mental side or even spirituality there's so many people that haven't explored that because maybe they don't believe in it or maybe narratives like i said stigmas and they won't ever and th- that might hold them back in some element of their life because you know maybe they're doing fitness and they're eating healthy but they have trauma that they just haven't processed or they haven't you know spoken with the right people to really go through that i mean it's going to hold them back in life i mean it's the same way that I-, I think all of us kind of are achieving or wanting to you know become better people each and every day ultimately you need to work on those different elements like like i said it's spiritual emotional physical financial whatever it is like i mean those all add up to the person you are and how happy you are and how successful you are 100 100 percent. yeah i mean it's one of those things like again it's it's also for dudes like guys don't talk enough about this kind of stuff right and so also true you know that's that's a big part of of i feel like what we're now shifting towards is a more open culture where we can talk about how we feel and stuff like that and like you know i mean Sonny and i have we're not only close when it comes to like web3 stuff but also real life stuff we talk about you know how we're doing on a regular basis we talk about things that are affecting us things that are positive things for us and things like that and so i think that's all incredibly positive i think kind of what you were going towards earlier earlier of like there are certain times where like medication makes sense but there's also times when it doesn't and there's times it it makes sense to try something else and like you know I mean that for me like edibles have helped me out a ton when it comes to my sleep like a a gigantic amount and and so I look at that as like good quality sleep is a very important thing for me I have to get eight hours of sleep every single day and so you know edibles help out with that and I enjoy doing just a you know baby amount that just gets me you know barely you know that little baby baby high I hear you yeah well I don't I don't even get like really really high like it's like I'm still very much functioning and whatnot but like I like you know it's like I hey check my check my sleep with my kudos ring and everything like that my sleep is phenomenal as a result right so it's little things like that that I think are important and then you know psilocybin it's like the studies have shown that there are really positive ramifications or really positive effects that it has on uh, with people who would deal with uh, deep depression and things like that also so, plenty of studies more recently with you know like pre- like preventing or even helping people reduce alcoholism or even stopping yeah. it completely where I, I don't think people realize binge drinking has become even more of a normality than it was 30 40 years ago um I mean, people will literally put down like bottles of vodka or, you know, get themselves beyond blacked out where it's just like, why are you doing that? Probably because you're repressing some trauma or you don't want to deal with it. And I think to that degree, it's also helps people realize how they're poisoning themselves, whether it could be like Sonny said, consumption of food or, you know, alcohol or different elements that are toxic for you as a person that make you, you know, inevitably unhealthy. 100%. 100%. And I think that's, that's where we're getting to a better point of people being able to deal with things in better ways. And so, you know, again, it's like, if, if, uh, if somebody needs to take SSRIs or things like that, then by all means do it. But if there is another route, then people should be able to have all routes available to them. And I think that's the part that I look forward to with like the studies that are happening right now with psilocybin is like, if that can help somebody, sure. I would rather somebody take a, you know, a a plant medicine than a, you know, uh, something that's derived from chemicals. Right. Um, again, there are certain times it's, it's not like I'm not anti-medication. I'm not one of those people or anything like that, but it's like, let's have all options available to us with the pros and cons of each and then let people make the decision that they feel is best for them. Well, let me give you an example too. I mean, we've seen historically over years, you know, governments as well as pharmaceutical companies have like raised prices astronomically to take advantage of certain market conditions. Ultimately, if SSRIs go 10x in price or if they stop making a certain one that works for people, what is their option? And, you know, like you said, the more options, the better. Ultimately, it's not my job to tell you what to do with your life. That's your own job to kind of experiment and you know experience what you want. And I think there are different routes for different people. But I do think I've also seen people that have, one, wanted to reduce their reliance on SSRIs because, you know, eventually they want to try and feel normal. And they don't want to be taking pills every single day. And for some, and again, this isn't everyone, I've seen them actually reduce or completely go off it with mushrooms. So that's just a whole other thing, too, where if it can get you back to that kind of stable, you know, homeostasis kind of center, then why not try it? hundred percent. I mean, everything, I mean, again, like I I think about like I'm 31 growing up, like it was like weed had this incredibly negative connotation to it. And then 
during COVID, it's looked at as a, you know, a, what was it? What was the terminology they used? A, a necessary business or whatever, where like they were allowed to function. And it's yeah. like, you go it was from very necessary, yeah. <laughs> essential. Yeah. Uh, essential, essential. Yeah. Essential business. And it's like, I mean, are they wrong? Yeah. You know, no, not <laughs> you at needed, all. Definitely, you needed to sleep, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> definitely weren't wrong. I'm yeah. going to tell you that. But it's like, it's, it's so wild to think about from our childhood where it was, you know, if you were caught with even the most tiny amount, you were going to jail or getting a, you know, a significant fine or, or, you know, whatever, right? To nowadays, again, it's considered an essential business, right? So I look forward to like more and more studies being done on psilocybin. But one of the things is like you have to either decriminalize it or legalize it in order for more people to be able to do more studies on it so that we can learn what are some of the major benefits of it. When does it make sense? When does it not make sense? And things like that. And so yeah. to me, I'm a big like freedom inf- freedom of information person. The more that we can learn about something, the more we can figure out when it makes sense, when it doesn't. And, you know, again, in order to figure that out you have to legalize it so we can look at i mean alcohol all day every day nobody can tell me that alcohol is a good thing for people you know i I mean i I can tell you definitively that there is less deaths from shrooms and weed than alcohol and and we all know that like anyone that has half a brain i mean it just look at that and be like okay so maybe we should be exploring these and to your point stigmas like historically have been for i don't know decades now used by governments or media to create narratives about different groups of people. They literally, back in the day, like, banned psychedelics and then associated different cultures or races with, like, their own narrative that they use in the media to kind of put those people in a bucket, which is incredibly terrible. Like, you don't want to see that shit. And I think, realistically, that's also what I want, you know, when I say like, uh, sorry, excuse me, destigmatize psychedelic culture, I want people to say psychedelics out loud without being judged, like, when I was younger, not this age, a few years ago, like when I told someone I smoked weed, it'd be like, oh, are you a lazy person? Or, you know, th- do you occasionally take, you know, edibles to your point? And, and people have this narrative in their head where they assign that to you. And, yeah. and that's not fair because people around the world are struggling in a whole bunch of different ways. And, you know, how they end up medicating or, you know, what they practice or preach is their own fucking prerogative. You shouldn't be judging them for that. Like you want people to get back to their level of, happiness i think there's also this thing where it's just like people people think that like you you know you take like a psychedelic or you smoke or whatever and they're just like oh you're just so high right now you're just so so high right now and it's like I'm really not. <laughs> you know oh, what I'm saying? I've had like, so I'm many people like, tell me like, you know "Oh, psychedelics! Like, <laughs> like how bad are you tripping right yeah, now?" And, and I'm like, like, "I'm not. I'm like, not I'm at all. Just like, like, I took a little bit of the edge off. Like, I, yeah. you know, like I smoked for the taste. Like, I'm, you know, I'm really just." cool enough here you know what i'm saying like there's i'm like very much still in a productive zone i'm very much here i'm very much present like we're not doing these things to just like get like high off our rocker like yeah. some, some something like that I mean, people just, are too which is yeah, again so, for sure they probably in some cases should or shouldn't but that's not my decision to decide that's yeah. their own or think, the people around them yeah I'm, I'm more so just saying that it's like there's like way more use cases now than it's just like someone is just like doing this to just get really, really high or just get like tripped out. Or well, like again, that's like that. the media narrative too. Cause when you look at like TV and television, like when they put mushrooms or LSD and stuff, like it was always like crazy to a sense where, you know, microdosing wasn't something they introduced within media and narratives. It was this guy's tripping his balls off. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's why we have almost a narrative we have to fight where I'm personally tired of the stigma where, you know, if I tell people a brand I own is called Psychedelics Anonymous, they give me a weird ass look almost <laughs> always. Uh, that's something I'm trying to solve. I, I don't yeah. want people to be judged for believing in, you know, natural medicine or going a certain route with their life. I know people that have gone to like ayahuasca retreats in different parts of the world. I know people that have, you know, explored with ketamine. There's, and again, everyone has their route or, you know, exploratory journey to take, but it's also not people's right to judge them for being a part of that. And will people still abuse it? Yes. But look at anything that applies to alcohol already. So like you can't treat everyone that drinks as a blackout alcoholic. That's just not fair. You yeah. know? So, so why do we treat all people that associate themselves with psychedelics as like, Oh, they're tripping and they've lost their mind. Like that's again, not a fair criticism, nor is it something I want to be part of. It's something I want to fight. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, yeah, I think the term microdose, I don't even remember hearing that up until probably like 2016, like truly, you know, and it's like, and I thought about it. I mean, again, it's like when I, I've still to this day, I've never smoked weed. I've only ever taken it. Yeah, I'm I'm a weird breed in that. But like the idea of 
smoking weed was something I was never really like, I just don't like affecting my lungs and things like that. I hear it. And so then when it came to edibles, like the first time I took way too much and then I, and then I was like, oh, wait, what no about way. the idea of like microdosing? <laughs> so was this wait, slur what, yeah, what, was this, what was this first <laughs> edible story. trip? I want to hear this. Oh, first time I was at, uh, I was at Dave and Buster's and Dave and Buster's. And okay. So I've been, <laughs> this guy's built different. He's getting high and going on slurf no, no, spaces was, and Dave and Buster's. Bro, <laughs> you know, other people that they get high and they like go lay in the grass or listen to music. <laughs> I, was, I was, so I wasn't even, I wasn't even high yet. I'm at Dave and Buster's and I'm with two of my buddies from college and one of them who is uh, who smokes often one of them who yeah. never does and who never has and uh and so the three of us are at dave and busters we're having a few beers few you know eating some food whatever playing games we end up you know winning some prizes and whatnot we get a, a monopoly pokemon monopoly okay um and so we take that back to my place and we're all we have a decent buzz from the alcohol but we're not drunk whatever we're just a little decent buzz and one of the guys was like you know what if tonight's the night you guys take edibles for the first time mm-hmm. and and uh and i was like i think i had a little liquid courage that night and i was like hey, you know i'm not like opposed to it we're all sitting here we're just gonna play pokemon monopoly the rest of the night like why not it's a terrible idea pokemon you're crossed monopoly. as fuck weren't you your stomach was all well, nauseous got so, the spins well so the two guys that i'm with are like each like six three six four so they're like bigger dudes whatever so they're like the one guy's like, okay, I'm going to take, who smokes on a regular basis, he's like, I'm going to take like 35 milligrams, right? So my other buddy is like, okay, I'm going to take 25. Now, it's his first time, but he's much no, taller sure. than me, right? Well, I'm like, I ain't no bitch. Give me the 25. So <laughs> I take 25 and, you know, probably. My name was flying. I already know yeah. how this <laughs> Like 30 minutes into it, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm starting to feel this. Okay, this this kind of nice, you know, playing the Monopoly. I'm like, this this is a good time. Forty five minutes in, I'm like, okay, all right, stop now. Like, get, like we're at this level. Stop I'm, I'm, now. I'm, I'm good with this level. Just don't go further. Okay, hour in, I'm like, okay, I am. I don't like this, and so I was like, you know what? I think I just need to go to bed. And so I like get up to go to bed, and I'm like. And I'm walking and I'm like, man, I feel like I'm like, I take one step and it's like 10 steps. This, this, this nuts. And so I like get to bed. I'm like, hands one on. small step oh, for humans. Yeah, so one truly, large step for truly, human man. Guys. I'm, I'm out here, got hands on both walls, just like making sure I'm getting up the stairs. And so I lay in bed. Hands on both walls. Like both sides of the wall. Yeah, you know, whatever. And, uh, and so I'm going up the stairs and I get into bed and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm too high. Like I gotta, I gotta go for a walk. And I was like, man, I can't go for a walk. I'm gonna get arrested. And then I'm like, I can't get arrested. This is legal. And then I was like, I was like, but like, man, like, what if somebody like, what if somebody calls the cops? And I was like, but I'm fine. And then I was like, but no, you need to go to bed. And then I'm like, dude, I got a whole war going on in my head right now. We all do. <laughs> and then I'm seeing the shrooms, maybe, uh, or, or the gummies. Oh hit, uh, and then I passed out. Here? And then I passed out. And then oh, I, and man. I, I woke up the next day and I was like, man, that first 15 minutes of, of highness was incredible. It was the afterwards that I was not a fan of. And so after that, I was like, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work my way up. So I'm going to go super baby amount. I went like half a milligram maybe for my next one. I was like, let's just see. Did a half a milligram? I was like, half okay, I feel nothing. I feel, <laughs> feel, feel quite literally nothing. Let me work out, work my way up. Now I'm like, you know, five milligrams, a beautiful amount for me. That's what I do. Uh, and then, I hear that. You know, and, and it works perfect. But, you know, I had to figure out the whole microdosing and everything like that. Um, and, I, yeah, it's I mean, like. it has to go with just people's bodies, compositions. Like, we all react to things differently. We yeah. were chatting about this earlier. And Marcus but Short. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean <laughs> yeah. me and Sonny are, are, are larger <laughs> individuals in terms of height. I could no doubt say probably everything that we would consume would probably take us more than you to feel the same amount. Yeah, and, and I mean that applies to plenty of people, but there's also people that are, I guess, just have different tolerance levels or ge- like genetic disposition where they might respond to something negatively or positively or just very heavily. Where, I, I mean, from that sense, like be careful with the things you do. Like, not everything's meant for everyone. But to your point too, small small doses really do help. You kind of have an understanding of like what's good for me versus like, oh, this is way too much. And yeah. I, I think all of us have, you know, had moments in our, in our life where we're like, I did way too much of this or I drank way too much or, you know, I, I was too, too like all in gung ho on this. You know, people have those moments where they're like, all right, you know, being moderate and kind of like having somewhat of a composition structure rather than just going 
full head in. Yeah. Well, probably a good thing to do. Everything in moderation. That That's yeah. kind of my mindset on all of it is like everything in moderation. I think if somebody is taking shrooms nonstop all day, every day, probably not the best thing for them. I if mean, definitely not. Right. If you're drinking all day, every day, probably not the best thing for you. If you're yeah. doing anything too much, it's probably not the best thing for you. So like take care of yourself, be smart about it, and like think about long-term effects of various different things. But again, I go back to when we legalize things and we are able to look more into it, then we're able yeah. to figure out, okay, what are the long-term ramifications of you? If you do too much, if you do, you know, if you don't do it, you know, what are the different things of it? And so again, it's like, we just have to have more, more research done and whatnot, but like, we don't, we can't have that done if everything is made to be illegal. Right. And so especially sure. again, something like that, where we know there are positive, you know, effects of it. I'm not sitting here. I'm not going to be the person that's like, you know what we should do? Let's legalize Coke and heroin while we're at it. Like that's not going to be me. <laughs> I don't see the the positive effects of, for those for yeah. people. Right. Psilocybin 100% can get on board with that. Um, and so again, it's just everything in moderation. What's a, what's a, what's a wild edible night for you now? Like what milligram is like a wild amount now? 10 if I'm getting crazy. 10 if you're getting crazy. Wow. Yeah. So can we, can we get you up to a 15 and you do 15 and I'll do 50 and we just have a night? I still don't know if that's equal. What do you mean? Me you being mean? a 50 is you, that would be your equivalent of doing like a wild night? No. Yeah, see, no, that's what I'm I'll saying. Do, but a 15 right. for me is a wild I, night. I, I, for I me. feel like so. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, do, I'll do 75, you do 15. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Let's figure out. This is know. the next podcast. Yeah, yeah. Tune in. <laughs> we, did, we, did, we didn't have just like one edible podcast. <laughs> oh, it'd be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know that would be that would be yeah yeah hundred percent. Um, yeah, I'm not opposed. But again, you know everything. Again, moderation. Moderation is important with life. You know, it's and uh, everything. But yeah. I think the legislation thing that you brought up is important because, like, you know, for psychedelics anonymous as an example, we have a psychedelics lead that's also been a part of our community for you know, almost since inception or, you know, since inception, I honestly forget. Uh, but he's a head neurologist in Nevada. He's actually like been involved in multiple different advocacy pushes or pushing legislation, you know, around the U S or even specifically for Nevada for psychedelics. So he's personally, I believe running an MDMA clinic trial right now, but he's, you know, our kind of front lines in terms of he has his own psychedelic podcast that we absorbed and built through PA that we're looking to actually partner with someone larger there to kind of get, you know, the audience in front of the right people because people want to know about all these different psychedelic substances, how they affect you, the do's and don'ts, you know, as well as resources or guides. Like if someone's completely new and they know nothing, like they're probably going to search Google first, which isn't an incredibly useful resource yeah. we've learned over the years. <laughs> um, and I think from that regard, it's, you know, people... Like you said, they want more information. They want more transparency. And I think anything we can do to help that in terms of push legislation forward, like most people don't know that we, like our, our community actually was heavily involved in pushing it forward for Australia. And so I want to do that same thing with the U.S. is, you know, help, you know, whether it's certain line items on bills or certain votes or advocacy groups, I want to help grow that and get the attention it deserves but there's also plenty of people that say they're passionate about things that don't ever actually contribute. So it, it is, you know, a, a mixture and I don't expect everyone to always be like fully gung ho involved. But, you know, if we do want to see legislative change, like people need to be behind that. They need to have a loud voice, need to be passionate. Like People tell me I tweet too much. I don't fucking care about their opinion about that. Like I'm doing experiments. I also the more I tweet, I actually I onboard more people. And some days where I'm like, wow, I tweet way too much. And then that there's people I've never heard of or people that have been inactive for two. There was someone that tweeted, Hey, I, I haven't been paying attention to psychedelics anonymous for the last two years. How do I catch up? But only because we were making noise on Twitter. And I think that same thing applies for like legislation. And you look at kind of why I think it intertwines with crypto perfectly is when you piss off crypto Twitter, they can literally ruin your life on Twitter that they can make people. And we've seen it over time like completely dissipate or disappear off Twitter, like completely deplatform them in a sense. Why wouldn't I want that passion and drive behind, you know, pushing forward legislation or free speech or crypto and, and seeing it, you know, get more regulated or even more adopted in certain areas of the world? Like why, why wouldn't we want that? So, I mean, from my, I guess, opinion, anything I can do to kind of increase that voice, even if it's not my own, but someone else's, you know, they might be a small account or someone that has, 
not talked about it a lot, but as soon as they open up, I'm going to do everything I can to make them feel like the most important or passionate person in the world because that energy compounds, man. And so many people are scared to talk about psychedelics or weed. You know, years ago, was that, like 17, 18, when I had my first like, you know, weed smoke or edible and uh, I remember I was in San Francisco and there was literally cops running down the street. I was going to a concert. It was a Vici concert and there was people running up and down the street with the cops trying to get, I guess, oh, sorry, avoiding getting arrested for literally smoking weed, which is such a wild world now where like if you saw someone smoke weed, it's like, okay, or even an edible, it's like they might be enjoying it recreationally or medicinally, it doesn't really matter. But back then people were scared to talk about it out loud. They had to like be fearful of police or even brutality or even, I know people have been thrown in jail for marijuana. So you don't think that same kind of stigma or approach applies to so many other people where they're just scared to be open. And we talked about this earlier with the divisiveness of the world. It's, it's so upsetting to see sometimes where you don't impose your opinion or beliefs on other people. Everyone's opinions or beliefs are built off their experiences they've had in the world. Like you might be able to change them, but it's not your right to change them. You shouldn't be trying to change them. You can help educate them on different things going on. It's ultimately their decision. Yeah. Hundred percent. I mean, yeah. Again, all, all of it stems back to it's like it's we're becoming a more open culture to a lot of different things. I think that's a positive thing, and I think that's how people, you know, have to look at it. So, um, my question for you, because I'm Hit just I'm, I'm I'm uneducated on this, is like I feel like in the last year I've seen so many people talk about shrooms, and and they'll be like, yeah, and I bought them at such and such store. Yeah. Is it legal in some places? Like, what is what? How is it being sold in stores? Or is it just kind of so, like I don't uh, want you to narc on people, no, but are they just selling it illegally? Like, what's the deal? Yes, in some cases. Hey, okay. uh, <laughs> chill out. Mark. We won't say where, but like, I mean, I'm like, man, I feel like every other, like, no matter, like, various different states. I'm hearing people like, yeah, I just went and picked up some shrooms. I'm like, from yeah. from like a random person, no, well, at a store. So they're <laughs> decriminalized in some parts of the u.s as well as you know if you go to like a retreat center you know they can give that to you but like actual retreats here um aren't technically retreats i think globally if you look around the world those are actually true retreats where they educate people on like the mental health risk like make sure you don't have schizophrenia and do like a full diagnosis whereas there's churches around here like psychedelic churches um that you know you pay like a I think there's a legal loophole where you pay some type of fee. Um, like it's like a monthly fee and you can get, you know, your monthly dose of microdose supplements. There's also like stores. Like the same way like weed was before, right? Yeah, like yeah. weed used to kind of do that. Where I mean, it's essentially like, like a membership program. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you see that to the same degree now with some of these stores. Like, I mean, they have it in Colorado. They have it in LA. They have it in New York where there's people selling over-the-counter mushrooms um, or these goodies. Some of them are legitimate. Majority are actually synthetic. So th- that's the stuff I would be careful with is so many of it is just really, really not pure stuff that might fuck up people's brain chemistry. Not might always, but, you know, when you mentioned being in your feels, I've also, you know, known people to have a bad trip because of some impure stuff they had. And you don't want that to really mess up your brain long term or for you to, I don't know, have too much of it and then be a completely different person after the fact. Um, and I have seen that actually happen to people where they weren't meant to take psychedelics. And that's why I also don't believe in trying to force my own opinions and beliefs on people. Like I don't want them to you know, naturally fuck over their brain or themselves. But yeah, to your point, I mean, some people are doing it illegally. There's also some legal loopholes, which I, I'm sure the government is aware of. Uh, and you know, ultimately not my decision or voice to be a rat on the world. It's, it's <laughs> what out there, I mean, you know, what is out there is going to happen regardless. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. I, okay. So I, then my next question would be, do you recommend if someone was going to try it out, should yeah. they take like a, a capsule or should they legitimately take the actual shroom? Like that somebody's grown. Interesting. Okay. So the capsule generally, and same thing with like chocolates or gummies is generally just the ground up version of mushrooms. Uh, my first introduction to them was with shrooms, like, you know, the snake shrooms and, you know, very chewy for some people. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that experience also isn't great for everyone because some people's stomachs get nauseous. Um, so that's also why you see them in gummies or chocolates. Now they taste better. People don't get as nauseous. There's other things they add to it to kind of help with the experience but you know 
I, I would say I, I don't have a exact answer there. It's not my right to tell you which one's the right for you. I, I would say get educated on, about it. Maybe talk to some people that have been experienced. Talk to the right resources. Make sure like mentally you're, you're good to take something like that. And then explore it. Like retreat wise, that's actually something I really want to do. I've been wanting to do an ayahuasca retreat forever and I've never because I've never done one. Uh, probably will happen in the next year or two where I'll probably go to like South America or even Mexico um, and just specifically, you know, go explore that because like I said, we all have trauma we don't even realize, uh, whether it's family or friends or just stuff we've repressed about ourselves that we want to improve. But, uh, you know, ayahuasca has been, I guess, claimed by some to, you know, really make you face your demons. But I would say that just is psychedelics in general. Um, you know, when Sonny was mentioning earlier, am I all up in my feelings? When you take MDMA, assuming you have, um, or, or maybe you haven't. I, I haven't done most. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally fair. But nicknamed Molly, you know, it's the rave drug. You will think everyone is your best friend. You will tell <laughs> everyone I love you because that's like chemically what happens with your brain. Whereas psychedelics, you, you realize the things about you as well as your friends that you maybe want to share. So like Sonny being like, oh, Mark, I love you versus like Sonny going up to every single person at the concert and being like touchy feely. Psychedelics is more so like you only want to be with your friends and close loved ones. Um, you don't want to be friends with everyone. You're, you're thinking more about, you know, the pieces to the puzzle rather than the whole puzzle type of vibe. Oh, so that means I'm a very special person to Sonny is what you're trying oh, to, what, sure. what you're, what you're making sure. out of that. No, that's, what I, that's what I took from that, Sonny, is, you know, so that, that's what. You, the, might be, you might be a little important. You might be a little. Tell us, um, I do want to know just more about um, Psychedelics Anonymous, actually. Yeah. Just like a little bit of like, because I feel like I've kind of, you know, obviously, seen it, you know, seen it around and everything like that. I don't know, um, like, all the history I guess like and the history, that. lore, and everything like yeah. that. Um, so I'd love to learn a little bit more about that and just uh, yeah, yeah. kind of like, I don't know, your overall take on NFTs right now. Because, you know, obviously you've been around NFTs for a very long time. We're starting to maybe see them pick back up again. Who knows? Um, but like, obviously, we've come from a, from a place of like we've we've witnessed the NFT bull market and like we've also gone through the NFT bear market and you know, as someone that's been a part of a, a, a community for so long, would just to lo sure. love to get your perspective on it. Absolutely. So let me give you, I guess, the breakdown of, of PA historically. So, you know, it's been around for almost three years now. And a whole lot of people that came in either passionate about the art or, you know, psychedelics or mental health. And the initial kind of, I guess, beginnings of, of the brand and the project, there was free mental health therapy for holders. Uh, so that is something we're obviously, I guess, exploring for the future. Not exactly the most cost efficient um, long term. It is quite a bit more money than people actually ever anticipated. Um, as well as there's some legal loopholes as well as legal challenges with doing kind of therapy globally in the right manners uh, that I, I kind of just wanted to be honestly with you, stay away from stuff that puts any of the brand or my people at risk. So from that sense, there's been a lot of different things through the ecosystem. Initially, it was mental health and kind of the mystery and game theory that reeled people in. You know, PA had four initial NFTs that they minted, and then it became like 10 over time because that was airdrop season. That was very much a meta at the time, and mm -hmm. you had to play this kind of game theory puzzle to get these different rewards, um, as well as, you know, the marketing around it was very good. It, people, it caught people's attention. A lot of people know the brand because of some of the marketing they've done in the past. Um, now in my own hands, you know, I hope to kind of, I would say, focus on kind of the main mission, but also refresh it in a sense where, you know, it got to a point where the last year and a half we introduced trait swapping to our, you know, kind of brand and collection. And you've seen a few different projects or, you know, collectibles do that. Is it for everyone? No. Is it meant for, you know, historic collectibles? Probably not. In the same manner though, I believe like art is identity. Um, so you're going to resonate with what you resonate no matter what, like one person could say that's good art. And then, you know, Mark could be like, no, that's shit art. And yeah. Sonny be like, no, nah, it's kind of in between. Uh, and, and that's kind of what I did enjoy about kind of the trait economy for PA is PA, you know, because it was generative to start in terms of the randomization, it gave everyone the ability to make something their own, like their forever grail. And some people might feel, you know, some, I guess, hesitancy around that with like collectability or rarity. And that's something I'm also working on solving internally is kind of having our own rarity tool to make that all very clear for people. But 
you know, it got to a point where it was like aesthetics over rarity. People will like what they like. You know, it could be the color red. It could be the color blue. It could be gold, like my PFP as an example. But people will resonate with what they resonate with. And then from there, over time, you know, and even now, what I'm working on is kind of bringing back the elements of fun that I really love, uh, I guess, within NFTs, like you mentioned, where it's a lot more community based around events, around experiences, around involvement and kind of activity together as a communal kind of group or cult, as we mentioned earlier. Yeah. And, you know, that's what I want to harness and really develop is, you know, we've seen some things from across the whole space that, that you know, we really learned. And I, I want to make sure that I'm always focused on community, culture, content, because, I mean, we see those. And I even had a tweet about this a long time or maybe a month or two ago. Um, the crypto C's. And, and there's so many different words to start with C that actually relate to crypto, whether it's like collaboration, community, culture, consistency, uh, and all of those go hand in hand for be becoming, you know, the biggest community that I want to be. Because to your point, uh, what is my thesis or, you know, frankly, how do I feel about NFTs in this current environment? I, I think anyone trying to shill you NFT tech has probably lost the plot at this point. Uh, people don't like hearing it. Go talk to a normie. They all think they're scams. So I think we can be all abundantly kind of apparent about that. And you've even seen some founders re, you know, ignite that with, collectibles or digital collectibles or now they're focused on memberships or this is just simply a community and i think when you break down nfts their simplest form it's just a community membership like you know you guys are both in d gods and i think people like know and associate it with kind of a really great strong community and you know bros in a sense and, and that fits their culture the same way with you know what i'm trying to do with pa is have a community that is just very passionate about psychedelics. Because when you look at the world, there's millions statistically that use or have experiences with psychedelics. In my opinion, I love using the word inevitable because I do think we fit very like neatly within kind of crypto for kind of our brand and mission. But I'm not trying to sell people on why NFTs are the future or why NFT tech is revolutionary. Sure, it impressed me a few years ago and I thought about, you know, smart contract application, but now it's, Having the most, or sorry, having the largest psychedelic cult or community within crypto, you can't tell me that's not valuable. Almost every person that I've chatted with within crypto either wants to know more about psychedelics, has experiences with them already, or they're excited about kind of destigmatizing it in a sense. So for me, it's just really building out on what my community wants within that. And mm -hmm. like forgetting, and I'm not saying like forget the term NFTs because I still use it occasionally, but yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to be some NFT bro where I'm trying to shill you why, why it's the <laughs> fucking future. It's like people have paid for memberships for hundreds of years in different ways yeah. and clubs. Like people all around the world are lonely and they're looking for that one thing that unites them with like-minded people. Yeah. And maybe that's multiple communities for you. Maybe it's like sports teams or religion or whatever but people have those kind of core communities so i think that's all people need to focus on for nfts or, or the you know major players is just to really focus on your community and how do we channel that energy to be like the biggest kind of membership for that particular niche because you know for example psychedelics anonymous is niche it's not D god's niche it's not azuki's niche we all have different niches and at least the really good ones aren't oversaturated in a sense where they can really focus on that type of vibe or energy with their experimentation or whatever they do. But, you know, to your point, I'm not trying to shill NFTs on people's throats. I'm trying to shill psychedelic, you know, de desynchronization. Yeah, like that culture, essentially. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, mean, I like that. I think it's, uh, I mean, I, I definitely think it's important, like to your point, right? There's not too much oversaturation in like the, in the different types um, of like, cultures that people are trying to be a part of but yeah I, I i like that we've kind of gotten back to this aspect of like it is about the community it is about the network it yeah. is about like kind of what we're building here on the internet um and it's not you know we're we got away from this utility word and everybody trying to like okay but what's your business behind the nft project i, 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 I hate like that. that i yeah. mean i obviously understand it because I'm, I'm a business and i have metrics as well for but sure like, I think that's part of the reason why we, I don't know, had such a, a negative stigma with NFTs is some people try to over, like, financialize them. Like, yeah. They, 
And just like sure, they're instruments, but were they meant to be crazy speculative financial instruments? No, they're yeah. meant to be <laughs> membership passes with benefits. And or, or those even benefits the, might impress you. Maybe they don't. The, <laughs> like, the, the like the crazy roadmaps of just like yeah. we're going to be the next supreme, or we're going to be the next this, well, and it's just like I hate roadmaps now. In yeah. hindsight, because <laughs> we saw so much like so much come through the space and. I don't know. The world is ever changing. Also, if you're in crypto, one week is literally like multiple months for a normal human. Oh, I, I'm, I'm just being real with you. Yeah. Like when someone asks me, can you catch me up on the last two years of PA? I'm like, you know, the it's been 84 years meme. Like, yeah. that's how I felt. Like a grandma <laughs> behind the computer. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I have my dentures in because I'm so old at this stage. But yeah. I, I think that's. Like, but I think that's where the, the value comes from, right? Because coming back to this whole like community network like like i've been saying this a lot but it's just like you have to have subjective value when it comes to these nfts because if if you're if every nft project is a business and like you're putting numbers on it and you have an roi and you start being like okay well what's your revenue over the year what's your year over year like what's all this stuff looking like then you can put like legitimate numbers on whatever that nft is and then you kind of just have this cap on your nft project where it's like well, I mean, if your revenue is not increasing in any sort of way, like you kind of have just a cap based off of like whatever you're making or anything mm-hmm. like that. But if you have subjective value where it's just like, all right, collectively we have, let's say 5,000 of us in this group. And hey, we all think like what's going on in here is so important that if anybody wants to join, like this is the price, right? And like whatever that looks like, right? It could be a dollar. It could be like $10,000, whatever the case is. It's like, that internal group is almost like making it based off of the value that all these people are bringing to the table. And that's where the subjectiveness comes from. Right. And to your point, the identity too, right? Like everybody likes that little like status piece to it. There's a re I've been saying this, like there's a reason why with all this meme coin stuff, with everything going on in the market, there's a reason why so many of us still rock PFPs over like just a picture of ourselves or a picture of anything else. Because like, People still want to be associated with these different projects. People still want to signify, For like, sure. "Hey, I'm a D God. I'm a Milady. I'm a yeah. uh, Psychedelics Anonymous. It's the, it's the I'm a Azuki." It. Yeah, yeah, literally. And I mean, to your point too, with kind of the speculative value thing, I was having a, a funny debate last night with a complete normie at the bar, which is kind of networking with people from Web three, of course, um, after the ninety CC event. And uh, the person was asking me, like. You know, what makes crypto like even valuable? And this was someone that held crypto, but they were bearish on crypto, which I found so funny. But I was like, what gives anything value? People's speculation on it. Like you could look at literally hundreds of years ago, people having coins within, you know, like different societies. They determined that was valuable. Cash. We determined that was valuable. We could say that's also you know not valuable now because our dollar is going down and meaning every single year. What makes crypto valuable? People's fucking attention and speculation on it. Anything out there is going to be inherently attached to type of value. So I think trying to avoid that is wrong, but it also shows how easy it is in some cases to increase that attention or, or value towards it. Like speculation or hype or whatever it is. I mean, we're seeing plenty of founders run experience uh, experiments now where, you know, it's proving that people don't need all this crazy utility. They just want communication or, you know, minor experiments or fun things that they can take part in because that's a communal kind of group that, you know, loves to learn, loves to grow together. Whereas when you lay out the future of the next two, three years, the world doesn't work that way. It really doesn't. Do you know how many startups or companies or even NFT brands and, you know, people hate the word NFTs now put out a path and they, pivoted from it i mean i've worked in startups my whole life so i understand that people don't love pivots as a community member yeah but if you actually understand it from a leadership or just a business level everything in the world is pivoting because the world never works exactly as we think it is and so i I think one you know being flexible with that and two like making sure your community understands the value of their voice because attention can just be derived internally from the community we're seeing some communities do that right now where you know, they're waking up certain different groups within them or bringing new people in simply by just having a louder voice, not doing any crazy drops, not inflating expectations with a crazy roadmap. It's just simply vibes, vibes and, and, and you know, attention will increase speculation. And it's silly, but 
you know, there's multiple things in crypto that, you know, people cannot explain why they are a particular value. They just are. And I think to Sunny's point, you know, leveraging that is very, very powerful. And I think you guys know that being, you know, part of some different brands or communities that have experimented with that. But also something I enjoy is, you know, people tell me, oh, NFTs are dead. No, they're not. Because all you have to do is just get out the people that don't believe and get out people that, or get people in that do believe. Well, I mean, that, that's literally all it is. It'd be like a, a church when they're losing, let, let's imagine some church that has a cult and they're losing members. Oh, we're losing our strength. You just go brainwash some more people hypothetically. And I'm saying this is like what the church would do as, a, as an example. But when, when you're trying to build the people around you that believe, it's just a simple retention and kind of onboarding thing where you're bringing in the right people that actually believe. And we all had a lot of probably misaligned expectations a few, few years back where people expected the craziest things out of NFTs or we were promised the craziest things and it didn't work out that way. So I think it's, it's not a matter of if NFTs or even collectibles or community is dead. It's what can we do to wake them all up again? I think the way you got to look at it too, is that we're, we're making NFTs realistic again. It's like, or not realistic again. They were never realistic. We're making yeah. NFTs realistic, right? I think. Well, people finally don't have inflated expectations over NFTs. Well, we, we were finally at where we wanted to be three years ago. To, we had to ruin expectations for people. Cause to be honest, it was like when yeah. I, I remember when I first started and I remember first time hearing the word metaverse and I was like, what does this mean? Like when I think about a true metaverse, anything that's different than like what Fortnite already yeah. has established, right? They've already done and created. I'm like, are we talking like a haptic like suit that you're wearing that like you're feeling and yeah. you know what I mean? Like what are we, I don't really trust some random person on Twitter that they're actually building the next uh, like, or not next, the first you know, a truly metaverse system where you're wearing this whole suit and you're in the metaverse. But right? who's also going to do that? Like we watched Ready Player One. Great right. movie, by the way. But do any of us actually feel like society is there right now? No, no. no we're, we, we all could be like, nah, like this, this isn't going to catch like at, at least like objectively speaking right now. It might in the future. And I do think like to your point, maybe the term metaverse isn't the greatest, but digital experiences will be a thing because yeah, yeah. people game at home for literally years now. I mean, they go to gaming tournaments or even do streaming and gaming. People will do digital experiences. It's just a matter of trying not to force it into some bucket that is really unattractive to everyone. Cause like, I mean, who wants to be in a morph suit, you know, running around their house, maybe down the line years from now for sure. But we're not at the stage now, like, you know, from a, just a digital experience standpoint, they're using psychedelics with um, like, I guess, digital activations like the Oculus or other like VR headsets for people with like PTSD that are military people, people that have been through like war and just have some real, really bad trauma, but they can relive certain experiences or go through different new experiences that help them alleviate that trauma. And I think there's going to be practical use cases for VR, AR, even the metaverse, but I also don't think that we need to necessarily call it the metaverse or, you know, same no, way. I think that term's dead. I, I, I mean, same thing with <laughs> NFTs. Yeah. You know, people say that now where it's just like, oh, why didn't we just call them collectibles? Collectibles have literally been a thing for hundreds of years. Why did we overcomplicate it? Because we, because we overcomplicate the shit out of everything in crypto. This and that's true. the one aspect of things that we 1000% have to do a better job of is again, we made NFTs so unrealistic that everybody else on the outside was like, you guys look like idiots because you're promising this, this, and this. That is literally not possible. Because again, when you talk about, and I, I bitch all the time about how we made NFTs so unrealistic, is that we, you know, when somebody would say back in 2021 or 2022, we're building the metaverse or whatever, my logical part of my brain even back then was like, well, wait, how does this make sense? Because even if you did a raise, which back then, let's say was a lot, $20 million with yeah. NFTs. You can't build true tech with $20 million. You just can't. It's not enough money. Like, if you think about no. what these large corporations are putting into, you know... A billion into, or trillion yeah, dollar companies. Yeah. yeah. It's like... The, I mean, if the, the metaverse research, was going to be a thing, you don't think Apple would have tried to solve it yet? Like, well, and they, and they, <laughs> well, and to be fair, and they've tried. And, and the, I mean, Apple, and the Apple Vision Pro has not been a success. It's been an epic failure so far. And so, that's my point. Is Yeah, where it, it goes 10 years there from now, yet. Yeah. Right, where it goes, we'll see. But again, when it comes to NFTs, it's like, if you tell me me 
you know, Psychedelics Anonymous is an online community where you can connect with other people who enjoy similar experiences to you. You can also receive the right information from the right people exactly. who can walk you through. If you are going to try something for the first time, they can give you helpful, productive information. If you are buying something online that you can get maybe certain discounts in various different places, things like for that. Sure. You can have group meetups in different areas where you can go on different experiences together. If you tell if you tell me that is what the like the goal is with Psychedelics it Anonymous. Is. Yeah. I'm like, that makes perfect 100% sense. And you yeah. can explain that to any logical human being and they can get and, that. But if you say Psychedelics Anonymous is building the metaverse for psychedelics, then somebody's like, what are we talking about? It's yeah. like, make it realistic. Make it something actually you. feasible. Well, and like, which you guys are doing. I, I appreciate bros that. Bros being bros. But, yeah. yeah, but bros being bros. But I mean, it's just psychedelic bros being psychedelic bros. You yeah. Know? <laughs> oh, 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 we, have our, we, have, we have our own spin. And like I said, I'm just tired of also seeing there's so many artists that are incredibly talented over the years that get stigmatized for having any tie to psychedelics. But, you know, to your point, keep it simple. If I've learned anything over the last few years, all these bells and whistles, people don't give a shit about, um, especially the overpromising. It only pisses them off. Like I'm trying. And I think that's just been a challenge for me as a founder is I can't control the timeline of how everything is built. I would love to. And I've chatted with plenty of founders that, you know, ultimately they're like, wow, things didn't go as we expect them because we overpromised. And then I they, feel like that's damn near every it, NFT. It's project. damn near like it is every single yeah, one. Because, every and I'll be honest one. with you. I personally don't like to talk shit about other brands in this space, but you can be honest or, you know, give critical feedback, of course. But I could say something good and bad about every single NFT project. Yeah. And, and I think anyone that tries to say that there isn't a bad thing to say about you know, something that someone's done or the brand or some event or whatever. They're just being perfectionists that, that live in this crazy ideal world where it's like, we're all humans. We're all brand. Like people will make mistakes. Like some of my favorite people in the space have made a ton of mistakes. But yeah. They learn from them. Like, especially the ecosystem yeah. that we're in. I think, I think what doesn't get talked about enough, honestly, is just like through this time, right? Like through this entire, from the NFT bull market to what NFTs were first, like, even just advertised as whatever and how they were like getting people into the quote community and like being a part of everything For sure. is that like the founders here have been also just like learning and adapting throughout the way. Right. Like it's just like as, as collectors, as traders, as artists, as creators, we have all been learning and adapting along the way of the markets, but so have the founders. And it's just like, you know, I've heard this take from so many people where it's just like, well, in my business and in my business that I'm doing right now. And I'm just like, to be honest, you might be successful in Web 2. You might have a successful business in Web 2, whatever you've done prior. It doesn't apply here. None of that <laughs> shit really fucking matters when we're talking about in this Web 3 space. Like, that, that is not a, that is not a, that, like, honestly, that's some of the best parts and some of the worst parts is just that, like, that's not a prerequisite to be successful here. No. And it's not a guarantee that you're going to be successful here. We've seen so many people that have, quote, come from successful Web 2 brands, areas, whatever, sure. not have success in this space. And you to know me, why? it's just like. Lack of culture and community. That part, right? And, and communication, it, too, as well. And, but. and it's just like, to a certain degree, just like, are you keeping your finger on the pulse? Like, are you really, really understand what's going on day in and day out? Because to, to your point earlier, you're talking about how a week in this space feels like a couple months. It's like... It's wild. <laughs> that, that in itself is something like, as a founder, if you are not actively ahead of that, if you are not actively keeping your finger on that pulse you're going to lose. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're just yeah. not going to adapt along the way. But yeah, to that point, it's just like these founders have also been figuring it out along the way. And so I think when you're talking about, you know, the over promising and okay, we had to move away from certain stuff and, you know, we got to pivot. Uh, okay. It didn't go as planned and like all this sort of stuff. There is to a certain degree as like the people that are collecting the people that have spent money, like, you kind of had to walk into it with at least a little bit of just like you can't hold someone to every single thing that they're going to say in this space because quite frankly, like this stuff Shit is just too moving fast, too fast. Yeah. So it's just like it might not even matter anymore like a month from now. Like what good idea you were about to execute on two weeks ago, mm -hmm. if it even had the slightest of delay or whatever – Two weeks later, that shit might not even be relevant anymore. And that's like wild. that's some of the hardest parts I'm sure to deal with on the back end of any NFT project team protocol, whatever. But that's just the nature of the game that we're in. No, I hear you. And I mean, from, you know, my own, I guess, 
like belief system as well as my own experiences being, you know, now the new owner and kind of, I guess, leader of PA, I do weekly town halls. Do I need to do that? No, but I want to keep people kind of plugged in. They can ask whatever questions. And also there's a lot of people that are not fully awake because they fell asleep over the last two years and didn't love the market. And, you know, I need to continually kind of gauge, have my finger on the pulse of what's important to them because I ultimately don't want to be in that position where I'm over promising the world but I also need to be abundantly aware of everything going on. Like that's personally, you know, over the last almost year now, it's been like eight months, I've been trading memes. Not because I think memes are going to be the, the new value for PA, but because I wanted to understand the culture, why they were hot, why people are so interested in them, you know, what degrees of similarity that they had to kind of NFT hype or culture. And you know what, like the most simple takeaways are, People want it simple, they want it fun, and they want a group of people they can laugh, smile, and have experiences with. Is there other added whistles? Like, for example, like when a really big meme coin establishes itself, they add, you know, future utility, but they don't market with utility because everyone hates utility. You add that on later on. And that's, you know, in a lot of ways, that approach I'm taking to PA where I'm like, simplify things, just make things fun again. And for everyone, just objectively speaking, that doesn't even just go for our, like our brand. It's, you know, everyone out there is trying to do somewhat that same regard, but without having my finger on the pulse, man, I would have fucked up multiple times by now. And it sucks, but it's also the work you commit to doing. Like, I think realistically, if you're not listening to you know majority of spaces, if you're not like reading the timeline, how are you generally going to know if something you put out will have any stickiness? Because the attention could be completely dissipated by the time you actually want, like you said, to share it with people. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> to Sunny's point, though, I've had people ask me, like, what's everything you plan to do for PA? And I, I tell them, fuck you. I'm not telling you because you wouldn't pay attention or remember it the next week. <laughs> is, that, is that wrong in crypto? No, not at <laughs> yeah. all. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. And I also think it's just like to this point, like, I don't know. There's there was at one point, um, I, I think a narrative around like, all right, building in public and building with your community, and, and I like will that do that stuff. for and, sure. And I think there's still great ways to do that and great ways to mobilize and activate on your community. But part of it is just like keeping the energy alive with them. Yep. And so when it is that you are actually like coming out with things to surprise and hopefully delight them, it's. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that they just like, they get excited about it for it, right? And, and it's it goes not. to your point. If I told everyone everything that's coming or everything I intend to do, one, like we've already established, things change so fast in the space, I might put myself in a really unfortunate yeah. situation. Two, if I told you everything I wanted to do, what the fuck would you speculate on? Yeah. <laughs> or, or, like, <laughs> Mars, <laughs> honestly. But, Wait, uh, by the way, Sonny, lean back. Oh. You're my messing bad. up the camera angle. My bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> Lean back. Lean back. Let me get back in my chair. Oh, do you mark. have a view of all the different camera um, angles or you just know? I know where he's at. Oh, he's he, just, yeah, he'll cross over into that light right yeah, there. My boy, <laughs> gotta, yeah. my boy got every angle of every camera locked in mm -hmm. on his, in his in his brain. He just knows exactly what the viewpoint is. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess we'll end it with uh, do have a gift for you. Obviously, oh. this is something that we love to do on this podcast. Um, you know, uh -oh. merch guy. Oh, Got to yeah. give out merch to every guest that of course. slides through. You know, and this is this is actually special. This is some OG OG Ooh. Utes Athletics oh, merch the from the first oh. drop. Oh, I'm a big fan of that shirt. Ooh, a little embroidered like on the front. Goes with the Olympics going on right now. What's the um, back? So does it have a back? You can open yeah, it up. You can open no, it up. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Get in there. Get in there. <laughs> Hell yeah! I appreciate you guys. Of course. So we got the Ooh. Utah Athletics on the back. Clean. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, of Love course. you guys. And I, I mean, I brought you guys some goodies, but you're aware of them. But yeah. I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you that psychedelic hat. You know, after Sonny's this. consumed a few of those. Uh, you know <laughs> what? Yeah. You know, you can either confirm no or deny yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, what yeah, are you allegedly, about? allegedly, allegedly, yeah, allegedly, yeah, yeah. potentially, potentially. Yeah, facts. But, don't come after us. Thank you, Klaus, for for coming oh, on the podcast, man. and uh, I really really enjoy the convo. You guys, yeah. can, you know, honestly, keep it's been it real. super insightful too. Because mm -hmm. uh, just like learning more a little bit about psychedelics and like the mission, and um, 
just even your beliefs. It was funny because when you were mentioning even earlier about like the like the pharmacy prices go uh, yeah. up of pills or something, I immediately thought of uh, like Martin, Martin Shkreli. Shkreli yeah. that's in the space right now. Uh, which, to, uh, which <laughs> to be completely honest with you, I think that guy's a scumbag and I really yeah. don't understand why we like to elevate every single scumbag. It's because people want their bags to go up. I get it's it. It's like that attention bullshit. But, but yeah, I, I've seen like, so many characters where I'm like, why are these people still popular three, four years down the line when we've seen everything they've done? And people literally. will still send them a hundred soul f- for their pre-sale or but whatever. But it's funny. It's like I literally yeah. heard him in a space yesterday, and it was like sounding like he was crashing out on some just like probably was just like oh, you don't think I'm more intelligent than you and all this type of stuff? And it's like, brother, you are on a Twitter Spaces right now with crypto degens. Why are you even here? Like, oh, hundred oh, percent. Why are you even here? Well, the funniest thing is like you are already on paper a certified criminal, and you're gonna try yeah. and tell everyone you're gonna go bitch slap him in the face. Yeah. And you're you're talking shit to thread guy saying you're gonna fight him you're a grown man that's already been to prison you have your own problems to figure uh, out like <laughs> i swear he's not wrong like, he's not wrong at all yeah um Mark's- but man yeah martin Shkreli, fuck that guy yeah. <laughs> just fuck that guy yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. like we do not need you in crypto we don't need some of these other yeah. people like i i just i truly believe that the culture and things that we are forming in this space every day and the and the creators and the people that are truly coming up from like the like literally crypto trenches culture and like being on CT and all that sort of stuff like in in the long run those are going to be our people that are platform those are going to be our people that are representatives those are going to be the people that take us to normies onboarding and all that sort of stuff i truly don't believe it's like aside from the one-offs of like the people that come from the outside that already have an attention and like like and and do it well like i again i i really feel like one of the only people that's done that has been iggy azalea but like aside from that no for sure like i mean to your point a lot of these celebrities just came for money yeah and and i don't know like iggy's full intentions but to be honest with you her interview was you know telling about her as a person and and i you know hope and i still see her at it i still see her posting memes i still see her talking about mother every day i still see her talking about other pro like other things that she's like collaborating collaborating with and just for that in itself it's like like that to me is more so the type of playbook that would happen but all these other people man like has andrew tate like, mentioned his coin since he was on tg's pod i don't think so i, th- I don't I know think to he's be just been going at people to be honest like <laughs> i don't really know that, that guy is so interesting but he has that's actually he has good, nailed viral yeah, marketing for but sure but it's like that's a good point because i do feel like that just like kind of came and went like he hasn't just, I, I said that to somebody yesterday yeah, I was like, like he straight up has not mentioned his coin since he came on that podcast yeah well he also mentioned like six different coins before deciding which one was his coin which yeah. i was just like this guy does not care yeah, yeah. Let, let's see what let's see what Daddy Tate is at right now. And we've let's, seen all the stuff with like the fake Trump tokens and all the. I'm just like, bro. Yeah, that stuff like, yesterday was wild. I don't know yeah. what's true, but I, you know, just I hope everyone's all good. Oh, well, clearly not because the market was a little upset. But wild. I'm looking at I'm looking at the chart right now. <laughs> Of the uh, Trump coin or which one? No, no, no. There's the, all all the coins. Um, no, I wanted to see what uh, like R and T is at for Tate right uh. now. Um, do you guys both own my favorite meme coin or no what's your favorite meme coin i don't want a hard shell i'll tell you after no say it oh, say, say it on the podcast brainlet oh dude oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. Hell, yeah. hell yeah hell yeah like, hell yeah that's, <laughs> one of my, that's one of my biggest bags yeah. <laughs> yeah. we so, love brainlet over listen, here <laughs> listen, if there's here's I'll, I'll end it with this I'll, be, I'll, like, I'll tell you my thesis on why though okay say it. say, say yours uh, first i'll say s- mine simply i've traded on solana for the last eight months watching these meme coins I've seen some of the stupidest behavior and this isn't categorizing everyone just like, all right, something happens in a news event. Let's create six of the same ticker and fight over which ticker came first. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. Everyone's bags will go to zero. Okay. Well, watching some people do multiple variations of a coin on soul and then a colon ETH, just like pick a fucking chain. Yeah. And then people trying to emulate or make derivatives like, you know, Mog and Pepe have been successful. You know how many people have like literally tried to rip them off or make some oh, yeah. derivative where I'm just like, you guys lack any creativity. And then I see people also in the pump fund shitters every day. Some people are very profitable because they know what the fuck they're doing. Other people, they go in every single day and they lose and they lose and they lose and they keep losing and they keep fucking gambling, which I get. But at a certain point, you're going to get burned out or lose all of your money. Like I've literally talked to someone the other day who's been in Bitcoin from like 
very early, like literally like seven, eight years ago, or sorry, actually even longer than that, probably, I guess what, 2013, 2014 maybe. And they lost it all like betting on alt shit coins where I was just like, okay, you know, probably wanted to hold some of your Bitcoin because that's what everyone's trying to stack up is people are only flipping these to buy the stronger memes or to stack their majors. But to me, just watching the behavior and it's not even just Solana, it's just some people's behavior is so brainless or half brained as well as, you know, you kind of have to be a half brain kind of goofball to even like participate in this space let's be honest you need to be partly retarded but we're all here anyways <laughs> and so we're having fun so uh, from that you know from that perspective i just i love the brainless behavior but it also is so funny to laugh at which is why i think brainlet will be a good meme is like the people that focus and they're too much in their own head will not get the meme until it's too late 100 percent. i mean I'll, the only thing i'll add on to that is i think that if you've been everybody's been rugged by a meme coin at some point. I bought yep. one the other day. It was like $700 was lit up in flames in like 30 seconds. Um, and so with that, I think anytime you have somebody who's willing to put their name behind it and like nifty has been willing to put his name behind brainlet as even though he's not technically the founder of it, yeah. but he's, I think he's the number he's, he's like leading the community. Takeover. Yeah. And he's the, he's the biggest, biggest holder of it. He's also was open about who's the number two biggest holder. Yeah. They're both basically like, Hey, we don't really need the money. We, They're we're both millionaires. Like right. That, that, which is why when I knew immediately when I saw it, I was like, it might take a long time for people to get it, but they're not doing this for, for money. They're doing this to prove a point. They already have millions. You know, sure, would they like to make themselves more rich? I think everyone would. Yeah. Just being blatantly honest. They're doing it for the love of the game. They're doing it for and the love of the love game to and, and to prove a point. And you don't fuck with people like that. That's what I'm saying. It's like, like if you've been that, That's why I was like... If, if you've been rugged, if like, you're getting rugged, stop getting this. rugged. Go yeah. to go to somebody you can actually put who's putting their name out there, their legacy out there, their reputation out there. Nifty's doing that. I'm gonna bet on somebody like that all day, every day, over some random ass dev who's already rugged 15 other coins. You know what I mean? So and just yeah. understanding information flow too. More once you like trade some of these, you understand how early some people are in, and like it goes from insiders to KOLs, and then to the group chats, and then the timeline, and by the time most people are seeing it, they're literally buying like the fourth wash of exit liquidity from someone's ass, and it's like, why am I losing? I don't know, maybe look at the flow of information. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Man. Yeah. Um, Alright, well let's wrap it up, because I feel like we could up. go another 30 minutes. I love you this. guys, so, yeah. This is great. Well, dude, you're here now, so we'll have yeah. you back on. So I appreciate uh, that. Why? Appreciate everybody tuning in and uh, go check out PA and uh, more brainlet. More brainlet. <laughs> there it is. Be in your Take feels sometimes. Be in your feels. There you go. Be in your feels. <laughs> yeah, Sonny, you in your feels? Wait, Sonny, Sonny's so, still in his feelings for Sonny, sure. Sonny, to, to wrap it up, are you in your feels right now? No, nah, I'm, I'm chilling right now. Sonny, yeah. say it. Tell Mark you love him. <laughs> <laughs> say it. Mark, yeah. I, you. Say it. I just said it. No, say you, it. Uh, did you miss it? Yeah, yeah. You didn't hear it? Say it again. I, you Ooh, say it. No, so <laughs> he's playing hard to get. You can, you can fill it in. No, 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 I want you to fill it in. He's definitely playing hard to Come get. Come on, Sonny, say it. Just say it. I love you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, watching that interaction between you guys. I got tears in my eyes right now. Oh, the I sexual chemistry is off the charts, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, that's the way to end it. <laughs>